Hello, I'm Llewellyn Falco, the creator of Approval Test. And in this episode, we're going to talk about unit testing MapReduce in Hadoop. If you haven't seen anything about Approval Test, there's an earlier episode that will get you started. And you might want to check that out after viewing this video. Well, let's get started in the code. In this example, I'm going to use JUnit 3, but it'll work equally well with JUnit 4. I want to start off by making sure I have all the jars included. Approval tests, of course, but also the common logins and Hadoop, which is pretty standard if you're doing anything with Hadoop anyways. But I'm also using Makito and MRUnit, coming from the MRUnit package. You'll see a link below. I'm going to use the word count demo that's fairly common in most MapReduce scenarios. I'm going to start by making the unit test that's the most common for me, testing the entire combination of the map and the reduce. So let's start by making a new test. I'm going to test the map reduce. I'm going to go in and use Hadoop approvals, and I'm going to verify the map reduce. For that, I'm going to need the mapper. So I'm going to use a smart word count mapper. Next, I need a reducer, so a smart word count reducer. I need an initial key. Now, we don't use the initial key, but it's still important to have it. You can't pass it in null. So I'm just going to pass in zero for this one. And then I'm going to pass in the text. Now, normally, this would have to be an actual text object, just the same as the zero would have had to be an actual long writable. But approval test is going to take care of that for me and wrap those as needed. So let's pass in the string one fish, two fish redfish, bluefish. And that's the entire test. When I run this, approval test will launch the diff reporter. Now, if you haven't used approval test before, you're going to want to have a diff reporter associated with your user reporter. I will list below my favorites for both Mac and for Windows. And over here, I have what came out and what I have said is appropriate, which is nothing so far. I just started. You can see approvals does a nice visualization. Coming in, one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish, I use the smart word count mapper to transform that to each word being counted. And then I reduce with the smart word reducer to sum up the total. I can easily view this and see that it's what I want. And once I see what it, it's what I want, I can move it over so that I'll have regression in the future. Once I move that over and save it, as long as that comes out in the future, I will get a passing test. And it will not launch on pass. Well, that's the basics of doing a map reducing a dupe. I'm going to take a little extra time and go through a little more detail on how to do the other ones. First, Let's just test if I wanted to see the map in and of itself. This is going to be basically the same. I'm just going to reduce the reducer clause here and verify the mapping. And now when I run it, I'll see a very familiar thing of just the first half of this scenario. This is useful if I only want to test the mapper, but most of the time I want to test the two in combination. Finally, I want to take a look at how to test the reducer if I only want to test that in isolation. Again, I'm going to go here and say verify the reducer. I'm going to start with the reducer itself, but now I need to pass in a key value combination. And for the value, I need to pass in sort of a lot of values that would be associated with a single key. So in this case, I'm going to pass in the key life. And then I'm going to pass in the values 1, 1, 15, 5, and 20. Now, when I run this, you'll see a slightly different result. You'll see up here, I had life come in with the associated values here, and then they get reduced to the total of 42. Again, I can approve the whole thing to get the regression. Now that I have all that working, I want to take a moment to talk about this word smart you might have noticed me using. This is because my mapper is actually extending a smart mapper, which is a class that I created with approval tests 
just to make the whole use of a tube easier. What it does is it takes the runtime information of the generics and makes it exist. Standardly in a Java, the generic information is only available at compile time and disappears at runtime. And it does that by adding these four methods onto the class. These are actually fairly easy methods to write when you do it. You can generate them with your control one. And if you do it wrong for any reason, the compile time information will actually prevent it from working. So easy to write, easy to do, but necessary so that you can have this information at runtime. Now, you might be saying, well, that's all nice and good for your code, but I don't want that in my code. And that's understandable. A lot of times there's a lot of existing code and you don't really want to go and start changing it all. And that's okay. If you want to use the standard word count, but not use the mapper, then what you can do is simply wrap the result. So here I'm going to take the mapper and I'm going to create a new mapper wrapper that's going to take my new word count mapper and notice this is just a standard word count mapper. It's not a special smart wrapper, which means I need to pass in the runtime information. And this time we have a long writable that comes in as the key in. Then the value in is going to be a text. The key out is also going to be a text. And the value out is going to be a long writable. So this is just a way of taking that information and wrapping it so I can use it for my test. And you'll notice if I run this, it continues to pass. Except for, even though all the information is the same, the name has now changed from being a smart word count mapper to just a mapper wrapper. A little bit of lost information in the wrapping. It's easy enough to just move that over to make the new approval. So that's how you handle the mapper wrapper. And you can see that the word count mapper just extends the standard mapper that all your MapReduce jobs are already doing. Well, hopefully you found this useful and you can start testing your MapReduce jobs and get even better certainty on your big data projects. I'd like to close by highlighting John Hintz, who I met at Agile 2012. And he's actually the person who introduced me through the entire process of unit testing MapReduce jobs using MRUnit. I pair programmed remotely with him and we converted this over to approval tests and eventually reduced all the duplication, getting it down to that one clean line that you can now use to test your own MapReduce jobs. You can find him on Twitter. And as always, if you have any questions about approval tests, tweet it with the hash approval tests. I monitor that frequently and will answer you promptly.